Greetings, dear ones. I am Cryon of Magnetic Service. And there are so many here whose names I know. Every single one of you, known unto God, is just a phrase. Would you ask the ones who have been healed in these past months and years, and they know what it is known unto God. They're here. It seems trite, but I wish they could stand and, and give their testimony, the, the testimony of the soul which is interdimensional that says, I know I am known by God for what has happened to me. I know each of you in this way, in this profound way. I have known you forever backwards. <laughs> Imagine eternity, if you will, in 3D and now turn it around and push it backwards. Time that never began. That's how long I've known you. Think for a moment. Use your intellect and your intuition for a moment. This is not biology that surges through your veins. It is divinity. The spark of what you call intelligence and life is forever. It is divine. And you all know it. You've even invented rules for your religions that, that echo it. Almost 90% of the earth has religions that believe you go somewhere else when you die. What does that tell you about expectations of life? It's intuition, is it not, that shouts that you're not finished when life is done. It's not a concept I'm giving you. It's a concept you've given yourselves through your own intuition, your own divinity. That life is forever. Because you're linear, you don't understand that you always were and you always will be. Long before the earth was formed, you were with me and I was with you. We are connected. We always will be. A system is in place that you cannot remember, that is shielded from you because you're in the test. A system where I say goodbye to you before you come into this planet and say hello to you when you return and you can't, you can't remember it, but I do. I do. I know your names because you're known unto God and you know who is here. The ones who awaken first on this planet during this renaissance that is coming. The ones who awaken first are the old souls of the planet. The Lemurians. And many others. Life after life after life and you can't remember any of them. Hidden it is from you. But I remember. It puts you at a disadvantage, but it puts me at a disadvantage because I am in love with you. And that's what angels do with one another. Love is thick, it is pure, it is real, it is an energy which you can see and you can feel and it pours into this place because it's precious. You know, this has been here for a hundred years or more. It's a lot of history in here. It's not the only time that we have come into this room. Did you know that? Not in channeling, but in healing. Not in channeling, but in love. Not in channeling, but just so that we could sit next to those who are singing. Because they love God. Blessed is the human being who seeks the truth 
for that's where we'll be. And that's a promise, you see. Blessed are those right now who can see the colors on the stage for they're already here and we've not even begun. It's a powerful thing when you recognize the divinity in yourself. It's a powerful thing when you can trust your own intuition and your own emotions and put away what you've been taught enough to say, is this really so? Could God speak to you like this? Could Spirit speak to you like this? I'll say again, this is the way of it. I'll say it again for you to hear again. All of the scriptures that have been written by all of the prophets responsible for all of the multitudes of religious doctrine. None of them were written by God. All of them were written by humans under the influence of the love of God. That's the truth and that's channeling. Oh, it's profound. Think of it. You've always had this. All of you can channel, if you want to call it that. All of you can connect, if you want to call it that. Every single one, known by God, just waiting for you to take the hand of your higher self. That's always been the invitation, except now there's something coming. I'll tell you about that in a moment. But first, <laughs> how many of you would like to leave differently than you came? I'm hearing a lot of answers. You see, I know who you are known by God. There are those of you who have things surging through your body right now. You wish you were not there. And you wonder, why me, God? And I'll tell you why you. Because of this moment. That's why. So you could get rid of it. With your own divinity, nothing from here. Angel, maybe it's time for you to wake up. Truly awaken and say, I accept. I accept the, the power of my higher self and I am far more than I thought I was when I walked in. That's what's here. Oh, it's all presented in 3D, you know. Difficult to explain, but you can feel it. It's a sweet place here tonight as we start these teachings, a sweet place. The Mayans and the Aztecs, they knew something you don't. Their calendars did more than represent to you the ages. Instead, they represented the energies of the ages. And they had names for them and the cycles they went through and they all agreed that something would happen in 2012. Some even called it the end of time. That profound. The Mayans called it the age of the new sun, meaning a new energy was upon you. We call it a renaissance. This is the great shift. This is what many of us have been telling you for all these years. Since 1989, it's coming. And it's not the end of all things, hardly. It is the beginning of all things, and it will have taken you almost a generation to create it. 2012 is the beginning, a marker of a potential on the planet that we have called the New Jerusalem. And when that time arrives, I want you to look around and see the changes that you have wrought. Free choice it is within you to do this and create this but the potentials are there now let me speak about how this works 
I'm going to speak about interdimensional things, difficult things for you to understand. And we're going to do it in a circle. I'm going to title this The Many Yous. Many of you, although you cannot see it and although it is invisible, you have the concept of what we have called multiple lives. Only you see them linear and we don't. To you, a past life is a life on this planet that you have lived in what you call your linear behind, linear past. You are currently in a life that you call my present life and if you are astute, you understand this is not the last one, even though some of you think it is. <laughs> oh, human, you're so quick to pat yourself on the back and say, well, I've done it. I'm not coming back. Yes, you are. <laughs> yes, you are. Oh, it's free choice, but I'll tell you what your choice will be. You're coming back. Why would you miss it? Why would you miss what you have spent so long to create? You will be back. You have a different perspective now. You're in the trenches. You're doing the work. And some of you are tired. But on the other side of the veil, you'll turn and look at me and say, how soon are we allowed? And I'll tell you, how about now? Interdimensionality is very difficult to understand, as my partner has said. Let me define for you your interdimensional creatureness. <laughs> You're an angel. Always were, always will be. Temporarily, you are on this planet and a piece of you is human. A piece of you is human. Now, you think the whole intellect is here, don't you? It is not. Only a portion of it is here. The rest is kept hidden, but it's still connected. You're in a quantum state with yourself and the rest of you is somewhere else. The question was asked, can you do... Can you do a, a seemingly circus feat? Can you be in two places at the same time? I will tell you this. You can be in multiple places at the same time, and you are. But let me tell you who is in charge, the one that's here. You don't have multiple brains. You just have multiple interdimensional pieces. Many of them, hundreds of them. For some of you, let me explain. I'll explain one of them. One of them's attached to you. It's called the higher self. That's one. And the one that's in you right now, that part of you, the human self, which some of you have, have even audaciously called the lower self, it's not so. That's how you think of yourselves, don't you? I'm going to call it the human divine self. That one longs to connect to the higher self. And that, my friends, is the purpose of your life. You connect to the higher self, you become a lighthouse. You fulfill what you came for. That is your purpose here. If you want to ask what you're supposed to be doing, you connect. Get reconnected, if you want to say that. You are an interdimensional being, able to be in many places at the same time, in a different time frame, but always connected to one source in this circle of life. Now let me tell you what this means to the concept of past lives. There is no such thing. That's what it means. For when you leave this planet, you will be out of time. There is no time. It's something that has been manufactured for your comfort in 4D. Let me tell you what this means to you. Now listen carefully. This is important. You think you've got past lives. You don't. You have multiple current lives. All at the same time, you see. When you get out of time, what are you going to call it? Think of it this way. A whole layer of lifetimes that you're living at the same time right now. They're all now lives. All of them. But there's one on top that's in control. And that's the one that you are living on top now. Not in the past, now. 
the one that you have which is currently occupying your body which you think is the only one talks to all of the others in what you call the Akashic Record which is an interdimensional concept and one of the layers of your DNA which is also invisible also interdimensional reminding you that all of the other lives are still there being lived at the same time in an interdimensional way why do I tell you this because there my friends is the storehouse of your power How would you like to have the benefit of everything you've ever done as an angel since you arrived here, Lemurian? How about 52,000 years worth of experience? How would you like to have that, Lemurian? Well, I'll tell you, you connect to the higher self and suddenly the quantum effect takes place and you're connected to all of them at the same time. And some of you know what I'm talking about and some of you don't because there is the wisdom of the ages. Shaman. You can dig down into those lives which you are currently living all at once and the one that's in charge, this one here right now, can choose to pick the best parts of each and bring them up and use them. Here's what I mean. We've broached this before in a different way. I'm going to use my partner once again, and he doesn't like this when I talk about it. But while he was on this planet, considering being the channel that he is now, while he was considering it, the considerations went like this. I cannot write anything I never have. I cannot speak in front of an audience I never have. Now, what we showed him in a way he still doesn't understand he did was he reached down into the past lives he thought were behind him which were actually part of him active that he was still living and he pulled out the one who was literary he pulled out the one who was the orator he pulled out the things he needed and you see the result talents that were not present when he was born, he reached down and picked them out of the essence of the Akashic record, which is alive and well and living in his life. And this is the promise that you can do as well. What, what, which one of those do you want? Shaman? I'll give you something else to think about. If you don't believe in the past lives, let me ask you this. I'll give you a logical one in 4D. It'll satisfy you. Do you remember when you were 10? The answer is yes. Well, so does your DNA. How about that one? Imprinted in your body is a memory that has a cellular stamp on it that says 10 years old. You see, it's still there. There is no such thing as time. It's still there. It's a cellular memory. How would you like to visit it? And you might say, well, why would I do that? And I'll tell you, because your DNA was clean and it was pure and it was whole and it was young. How about that one? How would you like to ask your body in your next meditation, go to the 10-year-old DNA. That's what I want you to replicate. Body reproduces itself all the time. Let's go to the 10-year-old DNA. Young, pure, fresh energy of the youngster that can't even sit still. It's alive, it's there, it's now. Oh, and this concept you have of the future, in the many use the future. Let me give you a snapshot. You'll say, cry there's a dichotomy here. You say, God can do anything. And yet you also say that God doesn't know our future. How can that be? It's easy. I'll give you the answer. We know the potentials of all of the things that you might do. It's extremely complex to you. To us, it is not. It's interdimensional. It all loops around in a circle. We can see the potentials of every decision you might make. Therefore, we know everything except one. In your free choice situation on this planet, we don't know which one you're going to do. 
But when you do it, we say, ah, that's the path that we had all along. Now we know what's going to happen. So I bring this to you so that you will think this through. I've already discussed the past in your mind. Let's discuss the future in your mind. Do you agree that each lifetime you might live is a graduate one from the one you had before? In other words, you learn from each and you reincarnate with all of the knowledge from what you call the past one. So the next life is going to be better. The one after that, more informed. The one after that, more enlightened than ever. You learn, you learn, you learn. If that's the truth, and if what if I'm saying is also the truth, that means there is no time. You have already lived them. Oh, you're living them now. And if that's the case, why don't you choose to go five lifetimes up and grab the wisdom that you were going to learn in your paradigm and pull it down and use it right now. How about that? <laughs> that's called ascension status, dear human being. And that has been the promise since I arrived in 1989. You've got a new energy on this planet. Whether you call it the harmonic convergence, the harmonic con Accordance, whether you call it the Venus transit, you call it whatever you want. We even gave you the big one, the paradise matrix. Go back and find what that is. All of these are deliveries to the planet to set you up for 2012, the renaissance of a new sun. No wonder it seems so dark here to you. You're only beginning to turn on the lights. I know I speak in metaphors. Let me move on to another one. You all want to know about it. Humans are possessed. How do I co-create my reality, you say? Well, the first way is to get rid of the sense of time. Understand and agree that you are bigger than it seems. There are more of you than it seems. And although you're in charge with your brain, think for a moment of these lifetimes that are still happening that you have control over. Crian, does that mean that I have control over my higher self? Yes, it does. Because your higher self is no more than a divine complement of your angelic being. It sits there in no judgment at all. It does not control you. It sits there ready to be connected to you. And when you connect to it, your thoughts are the thoughts of the higher self. What a concept. What about co-creation? In order for me to do this correctly, I have to give you the rule. The rule. The axiom, if you wish, that you've always known is there, but now I'm going to verbalize it. And that is this rule. It's about enlightenment. And here it is. No amount of enlightenment can be put upon another person to change them without their permission. Let me put it in another way. You can not with your enlightenment steamroll over another person who has not what you have. <laughs> it's against the rules. It cannot be done. And it doesn't work that way. In a 3D attribute, you see co-creation as something you do that affects you and gets you something. <laughs> That's not the way it works at all. You cannot in all integrity affects someone else's life with your co-creation. And you will say, well, how, how else can it work? Doesn't there have to be a winner and a loser? And the answer is, no, there is not. There's a winner and a winner. Here's what you don't understand. As you co-create for yourself, you push energy around that never would have been pushed around before. And when you do this, it helps someone else to move into a place that will eventually give them light that they didn't have before. At the same time, create a situation in your life that you have prayed for. That is complex. Let me review so that you understand two things we have mentioned before. When you send light, it is the same concept. We told you before, you are not allowed 
to send light with a bias. If you know something is happening and you wish to send light there, don't send the solution. Don't send what you want. Just send light. Get used to understanding that light is all you have. That's what the lighthouse has. It doesn't have an agenda. It only has light. It doesn't broadcast something on the light. It only has light. You send light to a place in the darkness and whoever is there gets to see better. Do you understand? And when they see better with their free choice, they can choose things that you have helped illuminate with your light. That is in integrity. We told you that before. The second review is we told you about prayer. You pray for someone. Don't put an agenda on it. Well, crying if we can't put an agenda on it, what do, how do we pray for somebody? It's easy. You see the result of the prayer. If you're praying for someone's health and they are sick, see them in your mind as happy without the disease. Don't tell God what to do. <laughs> see the result. If you pray for peace, you see an earth where families are not in fear or worry. Where they don't have war. And you see the smiles of the children. And this is your visualization and that is your prayer. And that, my friends, is just like sending light. You send the compassion of your divine self to places that need it. That's what lighthouses do. That's not hard to understand, but the hardest one to understand is co-creation. And the only way I can do it is to give you this example, one that you will all understand, especially in this town. <laughs> See, I know where I am. How many of you have heard of the parking angel? You got parking angels here. You probably have more here than any other place on earth. <laughs> Let's say for a moment you're in your vehicle and you're circling the block. And you're praying, dear parking angel, I don't know how you're going to do it, but we need a space here. You all have been there, haven't you? Suddenly, indeed, another vehicle pulls out. And that driver drives away right in front of you. You pull in. You go, thank you, parking angel. Now, let me review to you what just happened so that you're not confused. There are some who feel the scenario goes like this. Their arrival changes the energy of the circle of the block. And somehow, some poor soul who was in a store shopping gets ripped away by the neck by the parking angel and plopped into a car where they're forced to put it in reverse and leave. And then you get the space. <laughs> oh, how 3D of you. Oh, of course it doesn't happen. No, it's a synchronized dance that's out of time and out of space. Do you know how complex this one thing is? Your arrival corresponds because of the energy you put into the prayer with someone else's departure. So all the parking angel has done is to align the synchronicity. You're there at the right time and they leave and you come in. They're happy. You're happy. Everybody won. Do you understand how that works? Now think for a moment of the complexity of the planning of just the one. You've got a higher self and you've got other selves above that. Knowing what time you're coming, what time you're going, when you're going to pray and all these things because they're out of time and you're in time. Do you understand how complex? Just one thing is called the parking angel. Now, amplify that tens of millions of times because the process is about the dance of synchronicity. You're asking for relationship issues. You're asking for job issues. You're asking for travel issues. So many things you're trying to co-create in your life. You're asking for the synchronicity of the dance. And at the same time, so many of you who don't understand how this works, you put rules on it. 
Oh, Spirit, deliver to me exactly what I need, and I've, I've got this need, and I've got that need, and I'm going to co-create it. Whoa, but, but I'm not willing to leave the town, by the way, and I'm not willing to do this, and I'm not willing to do that. How am I supposed to do anything? Your angel says, if you don't move around, <laughs> you put restrictions on it, you're not going to have a co-creative ability. If you want to co-create, let the dance begin. No restrictions. Don't be afraid of the love of God. Don't be afraid of the love of God. You think you've got it figured out where you're supposed to be and what you're supposed to be doing? You all got something, don't you? You don't want God to touch. God, don't touch my family. Let me tell you about your imprisoned thought. You're always afraid that God's going to do something to your family. What if we touched your family and made them fall in love with you all over again? What if they got an enhanced love wash? What if this family of yours that you don't want us to touch suddenly becomes enlightened because they see something in you? Is that okay? Is that okay? Oh, you put restrictions on us. Let the dance begin. That's what we want to tell you. That's courageous, isn't it? We got one last thing. Yai, you've heard this before. Oh, dear one. We've spent time together, haven't we? It's called quantum intelligence. We don't speak of it very often, but you've got to know what it is. You want to put God in a box. You want to compartmentalize everything that is so that you can understand it. Dear God, teach me how to pray. I need to know how to pray. We've heard this so often. And we've told you before, don't worry about it you develop the light and we know where it goes how about that arrangement <laughs> free choice you develop the light we know where it goes you want to pray for somebody in Somalia but you don't know who because there's so many who need it you develop the light we know who needs it quantum intelligence you're connected, all of you. You develop the light without knowing who it goes to. We know the address. This comes right down to the effect of what Yai is doing with his interdimensional null laser. And Yai, we say it again, there is the attempt for you to compartmentalize the attributes of the molecular structure in order to have a harmonious effect with a certain modulation. And that you feel is therefore going to touch the parts that need it within the human body. But we're going to tell you this, do all of your experiments with a control of a multi-colored and modulated laser so that you can see the results of one that you don't modulate specifically because you're going to be surprised. There could be a generic one that knows exactly what to do no matter what color it is. <laughs> no matter what the modulation is. Do your experiments with that in mind and that will speed up things because then you won't be compartmentalizing the modulations as much when you realize that through quantum intelligence one might know exactly what to do. It's just like prayer. Are you here tonight and you're, you're uncertain of how to pray or what to do for your own body? So, I don't know what to do next. Why should you? <laughs> don't you understand? You sit in front of God and say, I am connecting with my higher self. Finally, dear God, not only do I to tell me what I need to know, but just do it, will you? I'm sitting here and I'm ready. And then stand back. 
All we need is your permission. Quantum intelligence will go to the places in your body that need it. Get used to meditating every day, even a short amount of time. Dear Spirit, place in me what I need. And you'll save a lot of time, dear human being, if you'll stop telling us what you think we should know. Don't you think we're around? Oh, you sit in front of Spirit and you say, Oh, you won't believe what happened today. Oh, yes, we do. We were there, remember? Well, Spirit, I, I'm going to have a hard time paying the rent. Don't you think we know that? <laughs> Don't waste time. We're in love with you. Don't waste time. Just get to the point. And the point is there. Is this, dear Spirit, give me what I need and tell me what I need. And then give me peace that it has been accomplished. And I'll just sit here and I'll be loved. Because that's what brothers and sisters in spirit do with one another and that's who I am I'm your sister in spirit and you know it don't you you know it don't you always connected <laughs> no matter what but you knew that didn't you I want to awake what you already know I want to take the veil away for a minute so you can see the colors. I want you to feel touch, touch tonight. I want you to know something happened in 3D so that you'll leave this place differently than you came in. That's what I want. You haven't got as much time as you think you do. We need you to do these things sooner than later. Here we sit in a very historic place, and I'm not talking about this church. I'm talking about the fact that we are so close to the event you called 9-11. And you think of the loss of life there. In your own city, in your own town, in your own neighborhood. Such a profundity of energy shift on the planet happened right here. Now, I want to just revisit with you for a moment these thousands of lives. Just the ones that are here. The ones that were lost right here. Just those. You know, out of time, they're still here. Some of them have turned around and reincarnated immediately. And if you could interview them, I'll tell you again and again and again what they have to say. They will tell you, at some level we agreed to this, we knew about it, we participated in it. It is part of what we came in for. We did our part, now you do yours. And they take a look at the smiles they have on their face because they are eternal, dear human being. Just like you. And you may not like it. And it may sorrowful for you. But the fact is that there is joy in their hearts because they are known by God. Every single one. Every single one. Just like you. It's time for a shift. Let you be the ones to begin this. It's a sweet place here. And the colors have been grand. Five of you have got the seeds of healing that you didn't have when you came in. And I don't just mean physically. How about peace over something that you want peace over? Don't you think I know who's here? <laughs> you want to celebrate it? Because it's happened. Why don't you celebrate it? Why don't you go ahead and let yourself feel it? The peace that passeth understanding. You can't explain it. Waking up peaceful. No matter what is in your life, no matter what the threats are, what the conditions are, known by God, let us in. Dear Lemurian Lighthouses, I'll see you again. You can count on it. 
You can count on it. You can count on it. And so it is.